Hey, hi, how you doing? This is the Gamertron. Welcome back to the Gamertron Show, and welcome to the second episode of GTNN. Unlike CNN, I am not fake news. I am very happy with the response of the very first Gamertron News Network video, and I am happy to continue this series. Now, let's not waste any time and jump straight into the story you guys have been constantly messaging and begging me to talk about. Yes, I know. Darksiders Free has been announced, it's in development. Newly developed and reformed publisher THQ Nordic has brought back several of the old developers from the original developer of the original Darksiders games, Vigil Games, and have created a new development studio, Gunfire Games, who are hard at work developing Darksiders Free to be released in 2018. IGN has some exclusive coverage rights that allow them to get early access footage of Darksiders Free, as well as early access information, yada 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 exclusive media stuff. We've had a CGI cinematic trailer and some pre-alpha gameplay reveal. You can check out all this information, all the video footage, and more, everything you want to know about Darksiders Free over on IGN's YouTube channel. But I know you guys are dying to know, what do I think? Well, I love the first Darksiders. I love Darksiders 2. They are some fantastic hack and slash fantasy RPG video games. The Darksiders games have a wonderfully colorful and dark fantasy world. Some seriously satisfying third person hack and slash combat. Some awesome protagonists, playable characters, awesome enemies to battle, awesome boss battles. Just everything about the Darksiders franchise has an aura of awesome around it. I hoped, but I did not expect the series to make a comeback. I fought after Darksiders 2, that was it, with the closing of THQ and no one buying up the original developer Vigil Games. I thought that was it. I thought it was, oh well, this happens with video games, this happens with franchises. Some franchises, some stories don't get their proper endings. So believe me when I say I am extremely happy. I am joyous to see that Darksiders is making return, Darksiders is getting yet another sequel, Darksiders Free, playing as the sister, the horsewoman of the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, Fury. Everything that has been shown from Darksiders Free so far looks good. The visuals look good, the character designs, the model, the environments, everything looks good on that end, but again, this is totally based off the pre-alpha footage. Combat and animations could use some work. They say the footage they're showing is pre-alpha, I believe it. Gameplay mechanics definitely need some tweaking and updating, some additions and refinements. But what's there, the baseline, what's there in the pre-alpha gameplay they've shown? They're well on their way to making a proper Darksiders game. They've already nailed the visuals. The game already looks gorgeous, just from the pre-alpha footage. So, we've gotta wait for Darksiders free till 2018? Well, now I'm looking forward to 2018. Get to play Darksiders free. Oh me oh my, that is just some spectacular news. Up next, we have an unfortunate follow-up story to uh, a story I talked about on the very last GTNN, and that's Injustice 2. Turns out I was right. The developers, Neverrealm, the publisher, Warner Brothers, and the many fans of this game in the YouTube comment sections lied. There are indeed microtransactions in Injustice 2. It has a very similar microtransaction system to Overwatch. There are loot boxes in Injustice 2, and you can either grind for some in-game currency to buy loot boxes, or spend real-world money on loot boxes. Now, there's nothing inherently wrong about this. Microtransactions are a mainstay in AAA gaming. Video games are expensive to make. You need other sources of revenue. I understand microtransaction systems. My problem with this is, my personal opinion, my personal takeaway, my personal issue with this is that they lied. Warner Brothers lied, Neverrealms lied, uh, the fans and the people who were excited for Injustice lied. It was stated time and time again by these groups of people, the game's not gonna have microtransactions, the game's not gonna have microtransactions, the game's not gonna have microtransactions, game comes out, it's got microtransactions. While Injustice 2 in no way seems to be pay to win whatsoever, it's still disheartening to see the creators of a video game and the fans of that said game just lie for no reason. I completely understand that there's a great amount of negative baggage when it comes to microtransactions, but lying about whether they're in the game or not? <sighs> Not cool, man. Not cool. In our next news story, Sega has shocked the world with their latest reveal trailer for the upcoming Sonic game, Sonic Forces. They dropped a bomb in their latest trailer, one that is taking the internet by storm in the upcoming new Sonic video game, Sonic Forces, 
you can create your own custom character. We're talking animal type, colors, uniforms, costumes, gadgets. This is the first time to my knowledge that a Sonic video game has ever had a character creator. And it is just taking the internet by storm. Because for years, it has been a well-known meme that the Sonic fanbase, the Sonic hardcore fans, have an obsession with making their own fan fiction Sonic characters. And now, the upcoming video game Sonic Forces is giving those people, those hardcore Sonic fans, an in-video game means, an in-canon, in-universe means to create their own custom, unique characters. Personally, I don't play the Sonic games. I don't really care for Sonic. I understand his importance and why people really care for the character in this video game franchise, and I'm really happy for them. I'm happy for Sega, I'm happy for the developers, I'm happy for the fans of Sonic. This is a really awesome feature to have. I love it when any game has a custom character creator. And you know this feature alone is going to sell copies of this game. There are hundreds of people, Sonic fans and others alike, who just love being able to create their own custom characters. So that feature alone is going to sell some copies and drum up some hype for Sonic Forces. I'll be looking forward to the release of Sonic Forces and seeing the many abominations that will appear from this custom character creator. Oh my. In our next news story, fans of The Witcher rejoice or be concerned because Netflix are developing a series based off The Witcher books. However, apparently from the description of this upcoming show, it will have nothing to do with the said title character, Geralt of Rivia, The Witcher. This is a quote from the show's producer, Sean Daniel and Jason Brown. Quote, The Witcher stories follow an unconventional family that comes together to fight for truth in a dangerous world. The characters are original, funny, and constantly surprising, and we can't wait to bring them to life at Netflix, the perfect home for innovative storytelling. End quote. There's not much else information on the show besides that said quote from the producers, and that this Witcher series on Netflix is slated to come out sometime later this year or next year. Also, the author of The Witcher books is going to be a creative consultant on the project. Now, my opinion, one of the best aspects, if not the best aspect of The Witcher games was the storytelling and the characters. I can definitely see the world and the lore of The Witcher being translated to film and television. I am, however, a bit concerned about how the producers describe the show. Is Geralt of Rivia going to be in the show at all? Are any of the Witcher characters that we have come to know and love and are basically the faces of the franchise, are they gonna be in the show? Admittedly, I haven't read any of the Witcher novels, but the novels are called The Witcher, and The Witcher is Geralt of Rivia. No clue as to who's gonna be playing Geralt or if he's gonna be in the show at all because the quote from the producers talks about a family, not Geralt. At no point I can't seem to find any information. If you guys have any information, if the producers or the creators of the show have talked about Geralt being in the show at all, please notify me so I can make a correction. But so far on my end, I can't find any information if the title character, The Witcher, is going to be in said Netflix show called The Witcher. Which is concerning to a certain degree, but hey, we'll see. There's not a lot of information out there right now. More stuff needs to be revealed, and I will definitely be keeping my eye on Netflix for this upcoming Witcher series. Should be definitely interesting, to say the least. And in our last really crappy news story of the day, I'm sure some of you have already heard about this story. This story's a bit old, but this is the shittiest and the best for last. Kickstarter project and upcoming indie game Pray for the Gods has undergone a name change, now titled Pray, P-R-A-E-Y, for the Gods. Developer Nomadder Studios, who is a free person, a free man indie development studio by the way, had no problem naming names in a newsletter about the reason about the game's new title change. Nomadder Studios said that Zenimax Media, parent company of Bethesda Softworks and the owner of the Prey trademark, as in 2017's sci-fi horror first-person shooter Prey from Bethesda and developer Arcane Studios, apparently Zenimax opposed its trademark application after it was submitted last May. In January, the developers abandoned its filing for Pray for the Gods, unwilling to fight Zenimax over the title. This was later confirmed by Zenimax and Bethesda. They did indeed threaten a trademark lawsuit against the indie devs for having the word Pray in the title of their game. And I'm just gonna jump right into personal opinion. What the hell? Just what the hell? Zenimax, Zenimax, Bethesda. No one is going to confuse Pray for the Gods 
with your prey. No one is stupid enough to think that they're somehow the same franchise, the same IP, somehow connected to your franchise and or franchises. This is ridiculous. This trademark is bullshit. Forcing a Freeman team of indie devs who are just trying to make their own video game, create their own art, create their own vision. They now have to jeopardize their vision. They have to jeopardize their artistic vision for their game and basically butcher the title of their game. I mean, is pre a P-R-A-E-Y even a real word? You're putting an indie dev through all this nonsense, through all this bullshit, for bullshit reasons. Your Prey trademark is not being threatened. It is not in jeopardy because of a free man indie studio. And if poor Zenimax and Bethesda have no choice but to harass an indie dev over the title of their video game because it has the word Prey in it, how come I don't see you guys going after the director and the creators, the studio behind the movie, Prey, a crummy 2007 horror movie about lions attacking people. If the Prey trademark is so valuable, so important to you, if it's being threatened so badly by a free man indie team, then why aren't you going after the movie studio who made the movie Prey, eh? And not just that movie, there's another movie called Prey 2, a 2009 Australian supernatural horror film. How come you're going after this indie developer, but you're not going after these movie studios who have already made films called Prey? And just Prey, nothing else, no additions or anything. There's just movies out there just called Prey. No, 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 we gotta go after this indie development team making a game called Prey for the Gods, a title that could never be confused for just Prey. Oh, we won't go after these movie studios that are making films that have Prey in the title or are just called Prey. No, no, no. We have to go after an indie game called Prey for the Gods. What the hell, Zenimax and Bethesda? What the hell? What you're doing makes absolutely no sense and is beyond shitty. In any case, I am still looking forward to the upcoming indie game Pray for the Gods and happily plan on supporting it and buying it, helping the indie devs out after they've had to go through all this crap. And now, to wrap up GTNN, here is some upcoming game updates and DLC for you. May 24th is Overwatch's one-year anniversary, and you can expect a one-year anniversary event to come with it, with new skins, possibly new game modes, new features, balance changes, hot fixes, tweaks here and there. You know, the typical Overwatch update and additional content. Keep in mind, that is May 24th, one entire year. Overwatch has been out for an entire year. Man, how time flies. So those of you still playing Overwatch, you can look forward to some more upcoming content coming out this month in celebration of Overwatch's one year anniversary. Paragon, free to play game MOBA Paragon, just got a new update, brand new hero character, FaZe. She's a ranged caster and support character, a teenage goth girl with superpowers. There's also been a number of changes and additions, including brand new cosmetics, a new addition to the progression system allowing you to obtain even more loot, including cosmetics and currency, resources, cards, that sort of thing. I haven't tried out the latest character yet, but she does look cool. Her abilities do seem unique, and it's about time Paragon got some more proper support characters. And more ways to progress and more ways to earn rewards? Always welcome. Always very welcome. So definitely going to be hopping back into Paragon. And finally, Mass Effect Andromeda Multiplayer got an update. With brand new free content, including new equipment, a new weapon, an assault rifle, and a brand new playable character, the Turian Agent, who everyone is losing their minds over because he looks like Garrus from the original trilogy. I absolutely look forward to hopping into this multiplayer update, unlocking this new weapon and this new character, and giving them a try. Anyways, that has been the second episode of GTNN. I hope you enjoyed, I hope this was informative, and please leave your feedback in the comment section below. Leave me new stories that you want me to talk about in the comment section below. Thank you so much for your viewership and your support and your feedback you know i appreciate it thank you so much anyways this has been a video if you like the video in any way shape or form please be sure to hit like button leave a comment down below if you want to support the video then please share it on social media twitter and facebook and if you want to help out and support me directly well there's always patreon anyways guys that's been a video this has been an episode of gtnn the gamertron news network unlike cnn i am not fake news and i will see you all later